Welcome back to BOGO Biology. Today we're going to expand on the topic of Mendelian genetics by discussing something called the dye hybrid cross. If you missed out on the original video introducing the idea of Mendelian genetics, definitely check it out here. As I pointed out in the original video, it's rare to have one gene to one trait matchups. Most traits are determined by the interaction of several genes, and there are also genes that control multiple traits. It's important to keep this in mind as we go through the video. When organisms reproduce, their haploid gametes, i.e. their sex cells, combine to form diploid offspring. Since the gametes carry the genetic information in their DNA, the offspring will inherit one set of genes from each parent. The resulting zygote is now diploid and has genetic information from both parents. If you look closely, you'll notice that the mother and father each contributed a slightly different allele for the same trait on this blue chromosome. We'll see why this is important in just a minute. To keep things simple, let's begin by breeding some fake organisms that I call dots. Unlike most creatures in the real world, dots are the ideal species for us to study because their traits always follow the rules of Mendelian genetics perfectly. Among other characteristics, dots can be either large or small in size and have either a fluffy or a smooth coat. Large and fluffy are the two dominant traits. Now let's try breeding two identically dihybrid organisms together and see what happens. Because these organisms have both the large L and the small L alleles, their sex cells could contain either the large allele or the small allele. Similarly, they could contain the fluffy large F allele or the smooth small F allele. This makes for four possible combinations of alleles that could be in their gametes. In short, every possible combination of upper and lowercase L and upper and lowercase F. One, two, three, and four. We don't know which set will be passed on when they reproduce, but we can work out the probability. For this Punnett square, we're going to list all the possible combinations of alleles in the sperm cells on one side, and on the other side, we'll list all the possible combinations of alleles in the egg cells. This first organism could have any one of these genotypes in its sex cells. The second organism is the same. Now we can pretty easily work out all the possible combinations of alleles that the offspring could receive. See if you can work out all 16 squares. Okay, so here are the potential genotypes for the offspring. Notice that some of the genotypes are much more common than others. If we color code them, we can see there are nine possible combinations of alleles. The most common genotype is this one right here, which is another dye hybrid. Now let's check out their phenotypes. It's pretty easy to see that the most common phenotype is for the offspring to be large and fluffy. In fact, the offspring are created in a ratio of 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. Again, remember that the probabilities start over every time reproduction occurs. Having one large and fluffy offspring does not increase the chances of having a small and smooth offspring later on.